I've got a box of comics. I've got a box of comics. I've got a box of comics, and I've shown it before. And in that box of comics, there are a bunch of comics. Amongst that bunch of comics, there are things like Rocket Raccoon, Lobo, Kick Ass, some Spider Man stuff, the Max, bunch of shit, and this. Which I've shown before, um, and I've spoken before about um, just how very, maybe briefly, but how just fucking fantastic Dale Keown is. Here's a picture of, of uh, a drawing of the Hulk he did. I know, like, fuck, man. His, his drawings are just, they're just fucking good drawings. Like some comic artists, it's like, wow, their composition's amazing. Their use of black and white is amazing. The use of light and shadow, use of proportions, their sense of musculature, their anatomy. Um, layouts, whatever. Like different comic artists have different strengths in, in in various things. Some of them are just good at drawing. Dale Keown, his drawings are just fucking good. Um, he also has a great sense of, of light and dark, a good sense of double lighting, which comes to play a lot in pit comics. Even in the front cover of issue one, which I've got here, um, he's just just so fucking good. Uh, anyway, so I was I was um, aware that other than this, which I got in a random like bag of ten comics for two pound in a bookshop where I used to live years and years ago, um, I'd never heard of the pit before. I was quite young. I didn't really know comics, um, but I always hung on to this because there was something really cool about it. You know, it, it's perfect nineties image muscle chains and and uh, you know checkered shirt comics. Like that's perfect '90s comics. Double li li double lighting on that is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really know what I was looking at, but I always thought it was cool, so I hung onto it. Later on, I realised I'd never seen another Pitt comic in my entire goddamn life. I was aware Pitt had appeared in various forms in various comics, um, you know, here and there, little guest appearances. But I was never, never seen another Pitt comic other than this one single issue that I was holding. I looked it up. Um, there were officially 20 Pitt comics uh, released of Dale Keown's own Pitt comic. Um, and this is all of them. Oh, my sweet baby Lee, Lord and Jesus. Um, I, I won't mention how much I paid for these. More than I should. Um, and it, it did bad things to my bank account. Uh, I will openly admit that. But, I mean, how could I not? It's it's the full run. 20 issues of Dale Keown's Pit comic. Including, weirdly, this, which is um, a half issue. Half of it is Pit and then... Uh, half of it is something else. I don't know. Is it like an X Files thing? I think. Yeah. What well, should I file it under? X Mulder and Scully. Some I like. I, I, it's cool. Whatever. But we're here for this weird half issue of Pit. Um. So I could. <laughs> I could try and look through all of these today, or I might spread them out a bit. I, I think you know we did Ashley Wood over two episodes. A big fucking book, so that made sense. And this, I figure I could get two or three <laughs> weeks out of. I, I mean, I could do four if I do five issues a week, which is quite a lot to look through. Still, you know, um, then that I can do that four times. I'll see how it goes. I'll look through it, and and if I feel like there's a natural stopping point, I'll do. Uh, no, so let's start at the start i don't even know how to well let's do this because that's cool i do like this as well how it's the same drawing but then colored differently throughout that's it's a pretty cool little that's a pretty cool little detail so pit number one this is you know from back in the day i love that it's on like um uncoated paper so it's not it's matte finish it's not shiny or anything and it feels very sort of dark and like the ink would bleed like proper dark 90s comic and it is dark the amount of ink on that page is ridiculous well not ridiculous but very cool i guess and yeah straight away dale keown's drawings that's fucking fantastic just and i i maybe absorbed some of this into gun viking but n absolutely absolutely not consciously i've had a quick flick through these but i've not looked at them in great detail so you know we'll do that as we go but there have been bits and pieces here that i've thought like oh that is really gun viking and that's really gun viking 
and again until recently i didn't even know these really existed so i didn't steal <laughs> i officially didn't steal and this arm is just fucking good he's got the veins great he i love his hatching is so cool his like chunkiness is so good triple lighting on this he's got the mid-tone and then the green yellow here and the orange yellow here it's gorgeous his layouts are really cool as well very sort of again 90s image layouts long panels and then this in front of the panels and then these bikers are just beating him up because that's what bikers do and then really cool just like beating people up scenes fucking arms and legs and shit really fucking cool and this is a really really cool two panels which when i first looked at it i i figured oh it's just two separate panels which it is but they work in perfect sequence so you've got his his back muscles his insane you know twice as many muscles as he should have huge chunky arm like foreshortened his hair swaying as he's punching a bike by the looks of it with someone coming off of it there all these bikers going every which way and then he swings around so you've got this guy's arm here holding a flick knife which very good storytelling like right in the foreground the the little twing of the the flick knife as it as it flicks out of its handle right there and then the same guy's arms <laughs> as the pit swings around and just fucking cracks him in the face chest head all at the same time with his giant hand and the flick knife comes out of his hand. Swing, poof! <laughs> That's so cool. And like the, the directional fucking movement of pit and the muscles and veins and everything. Just all these lines are just so cool. I love lines. That's why I do the hatching the way I do with ballpoint pens. So I just fucking love lines and making drawings from lines. There's something really pleasing about it to me. Just fucking these bikers up. And then you thought that was bad. It takes a shotgun blast to the gut. And then the claws come out. And I've noticed in the quick flick through I did, this is like a repeating thing, which is quite cool. It's like Wolverine's claws almost, but not quite as, as gimmicky. But he does, you know, like a cat's claws, fingers. The cl claws come out a bit, then they're more savage looking, red in the eyes. Shoot him again. And then he goes fucking berserk fucking slain warp spasm mode and that's a cool page as well double page splash panel almost just fucking gangster looking pit i know almost nothing about pit but he's just fucking cool and dale keown's drawings are just like mm, mwah, 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 mwah. fucking fantastic from the start as well like this is early days but it's just fucking cool. And then there's the whole thing with the kid is the side thing. Um, and I have, through my short flick through, I have found out the, the connection between Pitt and the kid. But if you're unaware, we'll get to it. If you are aware, we know we're on the same level of, of knowledge. And then there's the whole thing. There's people talking and there's like aliens coming from space and whatever. A bunch of shit. I don't know. Really, I just want to look at the drawings of Pitt, you know. These guys are cool, but whatever. A Sam Keith drawing of Pitt and the Kid, which is kind of cool. It's very Max-like. You know, that's basically the Max, isn't it? Um, that's, that's quite a good Sam Keith piece. Not one of his best, but as we've seen, very much not one of his worst. one so then there's this half issue and i want to focus on one thing in particular in this you can see he's on a train um, that's a cool cover the covers are worth pointing out as well because they're usually pretty cool some of them are much better than others but yeah they're usually pretty nice another another shiny flick knife um some shit some aliens i guess pit escaped from his chamber on this spaceship gone impossible where did he go? He zapped into... Oh, fucking my brushes and shit. Zapped into uh, life on a train. These thugs were beaten up. See, the kid is on a train with a hockey stick. 
because why not with his grandpa or whatever and these guys are attacking people and attacking his grandpa and then he hits the one with a stick and he's about to get beaten up but then the pit fucking swoops in warps in the claws come out dun, 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 dun. that's like gun viking with his like gun gun appears in his hand and then and this so this i saw this i was at a train station just after i got these i had to get off the train because it was too packed and i was felt like i was going to pass out from fucking heat stroke or something so i got off at a station that wasn't my stop and then waited for the next train while i was waiting i pulled this issue out in particular because i was intrigued by it being a half issue and i was taken with this sequence because it's such a cool sequence it reminds me slightly of the hallway scene in old boy and if you know old boy you know the hallway scene so they're on the train and then you know it's a subway train so the lights flicker on and off it happens in london just as well as as much as it happens in you know new york and wherever else um so they're all on the train gonna fight him the the lights flicker off and there's poof, 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 the lights flicker on and then you can see this guy's flying that way, he's flying this way. Lights flicker off, crack! The lights flicker on again, and he's just beating the shit out of them. It's just a really cool, like, visual storytelling sequence on a train with the lights going on and off. It's really, like, I don't recall seeing anything quite like that that utilizes the flickering on and off of the lights of a train in that storytelling kind of way. Um, as like a passage of time thing. It's really, really cool. And then he beats up all the guys, he goes to the kid, he says, your hockey stick, you're a good fighter. And the kid's like, thanks. Um, and then he jumps off, climbs up a building and then just looks badass. Um, he's just talking about, oh, so there's discrepancy in the atmospheric conditions. He needs time to adjust. He's gonna have problems fitting in. I hate it already. <coughs> And that's the half issue. Which is a really cool half issue. Is that two, four, six, eight, nine pages? Yeah, decent, decent, cool, fucking fun little half issue. And then to issue two. Um, and then straight away, it's it's glossy paper. The colours look a lot more bright. Um, this looks a lot more almost Marvel-esque in terms of comics which I'm not fully into. I don't hate it, but it does feel like even the difference between this and issue one, like they've taken Pitt and then they've made it more neat and tidy and corporate. That's how it feels to look at it. I'm not saying that how it, that's how it is, but it feels a little bit like that. It just looks a bit more cartoony, I think, in terms of like the color and brightness and stuff. Um, it almost doesn't feel like Dale Keown, but uh... oh, that's something as well. I noticed in some of them it says the colours were done by Dale Keown and someone else, which I assume is Dale Keown saying which colours go where, and then a colourist applying that. That's what I assume that it means when it says both people. Whereas here it's just one person doing the colour, so that may be why this issue feels a lot different to previous issues what does it say the colorist in issue one um colorist i'm oh, saying colorist but then there's a lot more black ink on this page um and maybe that's how it goes you know the first issue is when he's sitting down drawing every little bit of it and then even by issue two it's mostly outlines and then the colorist is filling in the gaps there's a lot less black spaces in this issue which it makes it feel very different to issue one. Um, which is, you know, like I say, not, not necessarily better or worse, but yeah, this feels a lot more <laughs> like Marvel than the original Image Pit issue one comic. Really cool though, cool pose, cool drawings. But it does feel different. I like when he draws a lot of like goop and blood and stuff. That comes up quite a lot in these comics. Um, and those are good moments. There's some really good moments where there's like uh, almost like you get a, a, a half of the body is drawn. Another half of it is silhouette. And within that silhouette, there's all this goop and blood like highlighted, almost like Sin City kind of when the blood is like bright on a silhouetted body. 
And then stuff like this just looks f fucking cool. Green goop, pink goop, a melted face with his teeth like Harvey Dent. The creases and chains and shit. Very, very cool. Awesome. That's a cool face. And then the whole thing in space and the aliens and and where is Pit now? Planet Earth. You are a fool, Quag. There's a lot of that as well of like... I guess at this point it feels very generic sci-fi alien name sort of stuff. Quag and Zygon and Blorgarb. Those sorts of like alien names or whatever. Um, this this guy is one of them, and he comes up quite a lot. That's that's a cool cover, but I'd prefer it if it if it was darker, like issue one of um, of Pit. And I'm not the, I like the color of the background, but the background just being plain with like a computer fade is a little bit like mm. like. If that was hand painted, for instance, you'd have a bit of texture in it with brush strokes and stuff. That would be something. But where it's digitally done, it, it looks a bit bland to me personally. Here you've got something going on with some lines and stuff. I'm not too keen on this cover, but uh, it's all right. And this straight away feels a little bit darker. I mean, this scene is at night, so I mean, that's fair, isn't it? But that's a cool, nice double page splash panel. I'm not impressed. I wonder what Pitt would sound like. Maybe that's something to spend some time looking at and thinking about. What the fuck would Pitt sound like if he was real? There's some hunters that are going after some deer or something, and then Pitt shows up and he's like, fuck you guys. What the hell? What the hell? I'm not impressed. He wouldn't sound like that. He'd sound like this. I'm not impressed. <laughs> You can run for your lives now. Ah! And then he becomes friends with the dog. That's a cool fucking drawing, man. That's nice. That's cool, but that's just like... Well, you have your character and you draw them a lot. Like, I, I like drawing Gun Viking's head because it's quite a fun little head to draw. Probably the same with the pit. Just a fun head to draw. Double lighting. Love the double lighting. Double lighting here, even. It's, I don't know where the glow is coming from, <laughs> but, but it's there and it looks cool. Really, really solid like drawing of the, the form. And you saw in that Hulk drawing, like his his uh, muscles and veins are just so fucking good. He draws them so well. And I love the chunkiness of Pit. I'd love a Pit action figure that's just solid, like chunky Pit action figure. Got the sexy lady in a towel. That's good. Throw those in the 90s comics. Bunch of other shit going on. Zoivod is here, see? <laughs> we need an alien being. What's he called? Fucking Zoivod. I don't know. Whatever. It's like um, in The Simpsons where they come up with Poochie and they go, and we need a name for him, like Poochie, but not, not as crappy. Something cooler than Poochie. And then the executives leave the room and the writers will go, so is Poochie cool for everyone? And they were like, yeah, yeah, that'll do, it's fine. <laughs> we need a name for this alien. Zoivod, is that all right? Yeah, fine, that'll do. I mean, I assume um, Dale Keown came up with his story and pencils is Dale Keown. So you have to imagine he came up with the characters, I don't know. But uh, that's quite a cool, like, little sequence. So there's this dead fucking thing, which I guess is the body Zoivod used to transport himself to Earth or something. I'm getting all of this from not reading it, but just looking at the pictures. And then the goop bursts out of this being's chest. It goes all goopy whoopy up and then whoop, into Zoivod. Wow, Zoivod is here. And Zoivod looks cool, but like not really cool. Just a bit cool. I do like lines all converging to a point, so that's quite cool. Something sort of like Venom symbiote about him, but not too much. Run! Open fire! 
There's a little bit like liquid metal Terminator 2 in there as well. Killing the police and everything. With his shiny spike hands. Another one of those. Not quite as cool as some of the pit ones, but Zoivod doing Zoivod things. <sighs> now there's a fucking cool couple of pages. This is really neat. Like the galaxy thing, and then it's like in... It's almost like a double exposure like you'd see in a film. But done in a comic, that's quite an interesting thing. You don't really see that too often. So in the shadows of the face and the mouth the stars and galaxy and stuff that's really really cool and then that's like an in-between panel cool whatever and then you get the splash panel and that's the last page as well the double lighting the orange here and here and here it's really fucking solid i haven't done double lighting properly much lately I mean, we need to uh, spend some time doing a bit more of that. I, I never bother reading the letters because, like, whatever. Oh, dear Dale, I really love the comic. Can you answer these questions? And they ask questions like, why did he look different in this panel than he did in the other panel? But then sometimes, you know, he puts in, um, you know, fan art that people send in, which is really, really cool that people do that, and it's cool that he puts it in the comic. Some of them are like, whatever. Some of them are kind of crappy, but some of them are really good, actually. So... I was thinking about maybe doing like a tier list of pit uh, fan art. I don't know. Could be fun for a minute or two. Um, Zoivod has the kid. Another. Oh, these are so good. I might take photos or scan them in. All the splash panels and the double page spreads of pit. Because they're just all so fucking cool. I need to do more of these of Gun Viking because just. God damn. Zoibrod! Release the boy now! That's a cool screen face as well. Oh. He's got no nose. How does he smell? Terrible. <laughs> that pose looks a little bit janky, but yeah, it's whatever. Says me sitting here at my desk looking at the stupid comic. 90s comic, but guns. Do, 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 do. Cool pose, not an easy pose to have the arm outstretched towards the camera with a gun. Nicely done. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool as well. Boosh! <laughs> the policeman. Woo! <laughs> Flying backwards, that's really funny. Action, action, action. Boosh! I like the double handed fucking boof. That's really cool. I love how chunky his feet are as well. You see those quite a few times throughout the series. Really, really good chunky feet. That's a cool, again, a difficult pose. To do anything from above is always quite tricky. So to do the body like that, like fading away from, from view is really, really cool. He's fucking melting his brain or something. The kid's got powers. Oh my God. He's using his mind to fucking tear into Zoivod. Tearing his fucking head off, Jesus. Splatch, blatch, blatch, blanch. Isn't that some old woman's name? <laughs> What's going on? What's she saying? I don't know where you come from, buddy, but around here there are rules to be followed. So shoot me. But she doesn't. Oh my god. He's got Zoivod's head, body. End. <clears throat> Oh, I threw it on the floor, never mind. I like this, because um, quite a few comics have done this. The Max had like an issue that was all like black and red on the front cover. I've got a comic, a uh, Gun Viking issue, that's mostly red on the cover, which would fit this theme. And I had obviously never seen this before, but I like that Pit has a, a red issue amongst the many colours there. That's a cool cover as well. Hand, blood dripping. I love the goop that he does. I like the goop that he does. He does good goop. Goop and chains, eyes in the background. A little bit of spray here. It's cool, man. It's a good cover. I'll try to get through five issues at least this, this week, and then we'll maybe speed run a bunch next week. This one feels a lot darker. The paper feels a little bit more uncoated. Still colours, same guy doing the colours, but uh, certainly more black on the page. Again, it's a night scene, so maybe it's darker for that reason, but... 
it feels the inks feel a bit heavier in this one, which I like. I like the heavy inks. There's a fucking werewolf. She's a werewolf. Oh my god. So like there's a woman walking at night and they grab her. They're gonna fucking do shit to her. Pitt shows up to like save the woman. Turns out she probably didn't need saving because she's only a fucking werewolf. What are you going to do? Call the cops? No, I've got a better idea. I'm going to kill you. I kill. Ah. Screams coming from the alley. From the same alley I just came. He should sound like Rorschach. Screams coming from the alley. From the same alley I just came from. It's the man who attacked the girl. Somebody removed their heads. The girl. I kill. Rorschach's turn. That's it. I, I had it wrong. Rorschach's journal. He sounds like Batman. Rorschach's journal. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Screams coming from the alley. Give me back my face! Um, I've been excited. Excited! To, to continue looking through these. Did we look through issue five? I don't remember. I'm not sure we did. Um, but we're going to continue looking through the pit comics. All of them. Every last one of the... Uh, 20 that were produced and we're just going to look at them and go that's a cool drawing oh that's a cool drawing yes we did look through this because it's got the werewolf and that's a really that's a cool werewolf and it's also a way of of getting around having to draw the werewolf's face just put it in shadow it looks cool and badass the hands the claws look really fucking cool i like the torn ragged clothing coming off of it the gnarled little teeth and all the drool and shit do you love his gloopy drool stuff that he draws? Um, but then he does draw the face, and it looks really cool. That's a really fucking nice double-page splash splash panel. I don't think I've got any splash panels or, or um, double-page spreads planned for Deathless, but I might have to throw one or two in. I might have a couple planned for something else, but that's a secret, so I'm not going to tell you about that. I might tell people on Patreon, but... I'll keep it a secret mostly. But yeah, we looked through that one already. Jesus, get out of here, issue five. You bastard. Hey, you little bastard. Get out of here. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing over here? Oh, shit. This little bastard. He's retarded. Sorry to use that word, but in that accent, it's, you know, it's a good one. Ah, <laughs> hey, you retarded. Sorry. I've taken too much caffeine. I normally take a lot of caffeine, but I've taken too much. I've taken far too much caffeine. That's a cool punch. I'm, I'm going to steal so many punches. I meant to steal um, from the very first issue, I think. Oh, I'm fumbling because I can't hold it because I've taken too many caffeine pills. Oh, let's look at some pit comics. Oh. Why do I sound like I'm coming? Oh, because the pit's fucking cool. I, I love, I lo fucking love the drawings in the, these pit comics, man. It's just so fucking good. Um, yeah, I meant to basically steal this for um, the scene in page four. Here. It's quite similar. But instead I just put just lines. It's small as well, you know. What, what I've done works. I don't need to. But I think I will end up going through and probably taking a bunch of photos of, of certain pages to copy from because that's a really cool... Plus, it's the right arm, so I don't even have to flip the image to draw it for it to be Death Fist because I can just straight up steal that. And fight scenes I've spoken about before, they're always really difficult to... Um, choreograph to to really put together a decent and sort of believable fight scene with two or more people interacting in a different way and moving and keeping it interesting and i usually try to like panel to panel go like left right left right if like the person on the left is attacking then the person on the right attacks or if they're attacking with their left fist then their right one in the next panel rather than like well that's the problem with death fist is his main punch arm 
is his right arm. So every panel is going to be like right arm, right arm, right arm. But then I have to draw it from different angles to make it look interesting and shit. Which again, I think I've done an okay job with. Like up, across, and then round. Which it, I didn't necessarily intend with this page, but I think it kind of works. Like up, and across, and round, and then down. Like it's quite a nice flow to it. Um, I think that maybe maybe it looks like that from the outside. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. That's cool pose. All the muscles in the world. That's cool as well. And that's uh, an awkward as hell angle to draw a body from. Because you're drawing the head from like underneath, but like turned upside down, and the body, you know, foreshortening away. The it's a difficult one, but you know, Mister Keown. Obviously knows what the fuck he's doing, Danny. Hey up, Baldy. What you got cancer or something? <laughs> he might have actually. I haven't read this. Timmy Bracken. Yes, uh, interesting case. More interesting than you may think. Um, does he have cancer? Shut up and grab the brat. Oh no, they're stealing the cancer boy. Cancer boy. Cancer boy. Does whatever a cancer boy. He's got cancer, oh boy, what do we do with cancer boy? Well, not much, he'll be dead in 15 months. That's very insensitive, isn't it? Jesus, that's a real thing that like people deal with, Christ. Um, that's, that's, fuck, there's so many good spreads in this. I think maybe part of that is like time saving on Dale Keown's part, because I can imagine some of these pages being a lot more difficult to draw than others or more time consuming you know just the amount of ink <laughs> that you've got to put down on a page or even pencil or whatever the amount of drawing you have to do to create certain pages whereas stuff like this like there there are details but in terms of drawing if you know what you're doing you can draw these buildings really quick they're just big shapes with some smaller shapes you know the perspective is sort of more or less there Put a bit of detail in the, the pit in the foreground. This is pretty much all in shadow. That's pretty much all in shadow. So that's probably took him about as long as it would take to, to draw one more detailed single page. But he's got two pages of his comic done in that space of time. And this is probably another one where it's just, yeah, big face. Basically just that. He does this quite a few times. And I did rip that quite badly, actually, when I was having my caffeine spasm. Um which is not cool, but I've got another copy of that one, so that's all right. Um, not that I really give a shit, but whatever. But yeah, that's a, you know, draw a big face and then draw a little bit, a quick one to do. His lighting is so fucking good. Ah! Throughout, you know, throughout. Obviously, the colourist, you know, plays a big part. I think, I swear, in, in some of these I saw... Uh, where it says colours, it says Deo Kion and Jo Chiodo. I don't know why I said it in the Chinese. Do Chi Jo Chiodo, whatever his name is. Um, so yeah, I think Deo Kion has input in the colour, if not doing some of it directly. But um, yeah, his use of double lighting is so good. Look at that. And that's because that would be fun to draw as well. Like if you think, if you if you draw, you know doing big bulky shapes and then putting shadow across here feels good to draw and it looks really effective and then if you get a different coloured lighting it's so so effective with the you know the city lighting coming from above the moon lighting coming from below or the opposite to what I just said coming from below and from above because I'm stupid in my head let's get crunk I've literally never used the word crunk before in my life. I don't know why I decided to now. That's really cool, but frankly, doesn't do the drawings of him justice. But then I guess few things like that do. Fan art, fan art, bow ban art, whatevs. Um, I should put these in some kind of order, shouldn't I? We've got five, five and six. Seven. That's a nice cover. Like... That's quite a cool cover, you know, a nice sort of combat cover. Two people fighting on the cover of the book. Do, 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 do. 
But that's really nice, really dark. The the corner box fits in really well with the font and everything and the lighting of the of the thing, the claws and the and the teeth and the shadow and the eye. That's a really nice cover. They're in the Arctic. Oh, someone else is doing the colours for them. And straight away the colours look very different. They look a lot more muted. Be another one that was very quick to do. <laughs> Zero background details. <laughs> some some very, very minimal lines on the the dust being thrown up. Another yeah, those were probably really quick <laughs> uh, pages to get done. So good on him for that, for you know, figuring out a way to probably get shit done quickly. Obviously, bigger stuff takes longer to draw, but again, if you're if it's what you do, if it's what you've done for your life, then you know how to throw together a drawing, big or small, in a short space of time. And still with the double lighting, used very, very effectively. And that's something I, I realised quite quickly with Gun Viking. Maybe mine, the way I paint it, is too sort of saturated and bright. But you throw... um a light blue underglow when he's standing in the snow is very effective because the light reflects off the snow and it's bluish so it gives like a bluish hue glow kind of thing to underneath parts of him if you look at gun viking there's a lot of that in there like i say i think mine's too blue whereas this is good because it looks a bit more muted but it's quite bright here so it's fucking and again, I haven't stolen it from here because I didn't even know these existed at the time I made Gun Viking. The claws coming out, a lone assassin, chunk, 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 climbing up an iceberg with his claws. It's pretty fucking cool, man. Oh no, there's the cancer baby encased in ice. And Jack? Oh, Jack Smithers? Doesn't he love Mr. Burns? <laughs> They're all wailing on him. <laughs> it is an honour to meet you, son of Zoivod. Creed, you're a long way from home, and you are a short way to being dead. Where is the Earth Boy? The boy has no concern of yours now. Crack, paff, wad, biff, bram, wham, whap, wham, wad, crack, fump, bash, bam, bam, cruff, wad, crack, bash, fump. They're all just fucking laying into him. <laughs> that would be like a, a Looney Tunes cloud of dust with feet and hands flying out of it. That's quite a funny scene. I think I wanted to put something like that into Gun Viking, but just never got around to it. I love the the, the blasts of colour when you've got stuff like this from like a like plasma gun or whatever. Like it's colour, 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 but then blam, green is the fucking thing. And then I think I saw the red rage like in Gun Viking, but man, that that light there is so fucking effective. That glow, the red, the pit in red looks fucking cool. It just looks so fucking gnarly. The razor sharp, shiny claws, but then this like harsh white lighting with a little bit of blue fading there, so effective in like building the structure of that face. That's a really, really fucking nice panel. God damn it. And then, so, that's quite funny. They're all beating on him, beating the, well, beating the tar out of him, I guess, in a way. Shooting him and this and that, and then he goes, ha, 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 you fuckers, messed with the wrong goddamn giant alien monster. St starts tearing them to fucking pieces. Great poses as well. Definitely going to steal some of them. That's a good punch pose. That's a good, like, action pose, a good jump. See if this is Death Fist, if I flip this over and that's his right arm smashing down. That's a good one to use. That's really fucking cool. Now, now where is Timmy? <laughs> Timmy! All the goop, all the, all the green alien blood and the red whatever blood. A really cool like uh, pose, uh, a camera angle from above with the pose and the thing. And blood coming out of his chest all over his hands that's really fucking cool there's a lot of that in this prepare my ship 
I have a family matter to attend to. Oh, my brother works fast. Is this Pitt's brother? See, you realise it all comes together. It's all about... It's, it's like Fast and the Furious. It's all about family. Issue 8. I probably will be looking at this for the next next few weeks. So, strap in, fuck faces. Or maybe afterwards I can, like, clip these bits out and have one long video of me looking at Pitt comics. Would that be interesting? I don't care, I'll do it anyway. That's quite a cool cover. Especially having seen this guy very briefly in the end of the last issue. To see him on the front cover, knowing he's showing up again. <laughs> what? Dale Keown, creator, pencils, ink, story. Cool. Brian Hotton, script. So Dale Keown comes up with the basis of the story. Brian Hotton actually types it into a script with dialogue and such, I assume. Joe Chihodo, uh, Chiodo on colours. All of these people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. Computer colours. What? 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 What's the difference between colours and computer colours? And why does it take nine people to... I'm not sure I understand. I might need to send some strongly worded emails to figure out what the fuck's going on there. Timmy! I'm going to stop doing that now. I won't do that anymore. Whenever they mention Timmy, I won't do the South Park Timmy voice. Roth. Is that the guy's name? Oh, look, it's like Pip, but bold. What, has he got cancer or something? <sighs> See, it's a callback to the colours on that, man. Maybe that's why it took nine people, because look how good the colouring is. Like The little highlights on the, the muscles is cool, and then the, the, the switch, the double lighting, the underlighting. It, it's a real glow as well, with because it's like red, but then orange, but then into yellow, putting that yellow little hot highlight right on the tips there just on the sharp shiny parts that's really really fucking good that's the sort of thing i'd do with turquoise and pink that lighting it's really effective with what, what would you call that like a deep blue purple and uh, a sort of reddish orange that's really really cool Fwah! turquoise we love some fucking turquoise yeah the lighting in these comics is is frankly phenomenal. Like, I don't know of many other comics that, especially from this time, you know, 90s image era comics that have lighting this fucking good. Like, the colours are good, the lighting is good. It's so well done on top of the incredible drawings. Because, you know, for all of Rob Liefeld's, uh, Liefeld's, Liefeld's faults, of which there are many... Um, a lot of his comics look cool. Like, if you just flip through them, they look cool. There's a lot of, like, you know, the pouches and robot arms and big guns and blasts and phew, 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 fight scenes and stuff. They look cool. But then, you know, you get into them and you realise, eh, it's a bunch of drawings and it's cool, whatever. But then you get comics like this where the craft is just so on point. The drawings are fucking phenomenal and immaculate. The, uh, the colour and lighting perfectly complements the drawings and fits so well and, and it's so well done that's really quite admirable and for a series that like didn't really go anywhere you know it wasn't like spawn where the creator just carry on doing it forever and ever and ever um or something like that it, it had and maybe maybe it's best <laughs> it stayed in its little it had its its moment 20 issues some other appearances and that's that call it a day um, but you know, Pitt isn't really amongst comics people. People who know people know who Pitt is. But in general, if you bring up Pitt, if you say I like comics, and you say I like Pitt, people just be like, what? "Oh, fucking know what it is." Fucking shut up, you Jesus! Oh, we got his hair back. He looks like a young me. That's quite funny. Issue nine. Let's see how many we can get through. How how long have we been going? Ah, you get through at least another one or so. Oh, this is different. Oh, an alien abduction story, is it? 
high above the world in the silence of space, the being known as Jerob, child of future light, uh, bade farewell to the Creed hybrid whose body and mind he shared for so long. I am greatly indebted to you, Pitt. You kept me alive at great risk to yourself and others. You will remain here on Earth. This is your home now. But before I take my leave, there is one more thing I must share with you. The truth. Oh, is this is his fucking backstory. Oh my god. Oh my days, blood. This is fucking Pitt's backstory. Oh man. The fuck you saying, blood? This woman and man got fucking abducted. She got probed in her fucking pussy. -o. And then Zoivod got her pregnant. And behold, the face of the galaxy's future. The face of Zoivod. <sighs> and the police show up and they're like, what the fuck's going on here? Is she fucking drunk or something? This bitch up off the floor. What's she doing on the ground? Getting all pregnant and shit. Alien baby in my uterus. Woman of Earth, gaze upon the one who will carry the fruit of your womb to the stars. Yeah, he's see he's inseminating this fucking lady. And the child. <gasps> it's Pitt. That's how Pitt was born. Pitt was born of immaculate conceit. He's like Jesus. Pitt is like Jesus. Fucking robot head. What's going on? This is a, a, a what do they call it? Um, an exposition issue. An issue that's telling the story. Oh shit. Uh, look, he's hitting himself in the face. What are you doing that for? You crazy? Or just... What? See, they're pushing Timmy around. Little little boy Timmy pushing him around. And then he goes, Hey, I've got powers. Fuck the lawyers. <laughs> Fucking telekinesis hitting himself, throwing him up into the sky. This is justice, Kevbo. He's going to fucking destroy them all. They started it. They always start it. They hurt me. They hurt everybody. And now I laugh about it. They've got to learn their lesson. They've got to d Oh, I think he's saying they've got to die. But then Pitt shows up to stop him. Die. There you go, yeah. Huh? What? What? I'm... Back at you. So, yeah, not, not an issue full of incredible drawings and wow, action-packed stuff. But... You learn some shit. Whoa! That's a cool fucking cover. That'd be a cool cover regardless of it being a pit comic. But when you know it's a pit comic and you know this little boy's, you know, a weird little boy's got some shit going on and he's got these fucking big claws and he's fighting Pit, but they were like friends, but now he's fucking fighting him. What's going on? A showdown between <laughs> Timmy and Pit. There is no here, there is no now, there is only perception. Perception is the product of mind and spirit acting to impose structure upon time and space. Any such structure uh, received by only one entity is merely an opinion. Shared by two or more, it constitutes a version of reality. So they're there in reality, but then in, in their other fucking sphere of reality, they're having a showdown. And that's the hockey stick from the the half issue where he was on the train and he had the hockey stick and he fucking broke it. They're fucking having a proper fight. He's fucking decking him in with a hockey stick. You must control your emotions, Timmy. Ah! Uh, there's, there's no need for this. My talons are meant for fighting enemies. That's funny. So are mine. He's grown talons and now he's fighting his enemy who he sees as his enemy anyway. Fucking put his fucking clawed fist through Pitt's chest. What's going on? Fucking tearing at him and shit. That's cool. Lighting, 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 double lighting. That's really so fucking effective and relatively easy to do. Throw shadow in the middle of a person. 
double lighting from either side almost automatically. If you get the lines right and you know you know where to leave gaps of lighting and stuff, it can be so fucking effective. And like I say, kind of easy to do if you sort of know what you're doing. Um, really, really fucking cool drawing. A bunch of Zoivods. <gasps> you should be more respectful. Is that any way to speak to your twin brother? <gasps> oh my god. See, Timmy and Pitt are not just friends. They're twin brothers. A human and an alien, both with weird alien powers and shit. But is it true? Yes, I didn't know until recently. How can this be? We, we, that's impossible. It's true. They're twin brothers. That's that's something, man. And then this this guy is, is another one of their brothers. And Zoivod is their dad. And some woman's their mum, I guess. <laughs> comes out of the swamp <laughs> there's a dog running away from some guy the guy's about to shoot the dog <laughs> oh I'm gonna skin you and feed you to the weasels the dog is not your possession <laughs> pushes him skip skip bam into a tree and this panel here first, the dog, Arf, and him, Arf. <laughs> that's pretty funny. I like that. Oh, fair, that's pretty cool. Some more kids doing kid shit. There's no room for you here. Not me, the dog. All right, I suppose. Isn't that what happened in John Wick? Where he's like, he goes back to the hotel and they're like, yeah, you can't stay here. And he goes, nah, just let my dog in. And then the guy takes care of his dog. I think that is literally what happens in John Wick. It's not like the point of John Wick, but it's a thing that happens in John Wick. Fan art. Do, 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 do. Fan art. Do, 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 do. Oh, I thought this was fan art. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, is that fan art? That's fucking incredible. Uh, but no, it's... um. A preview of the forthcoming issue 11. And as it is. I, th See, digital colour is, you know, has its place, I guess. But that looks so much fucking cooler than that. But what do I know? Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> that was funny. This was a really cool issue. This was a really fun one. Really cool drawings. Which is the point, isn't it? That's, that's the point. See, for me, see, this is one of those things I'd say if I was in an interview, if I was ever famous enough to be interviewed about my cool artwork and shit, and they'd go, well, what, what does art mean to you? Or do you go to galleries? Do you, you know, do you do you like, like art, fine art, whatever? And to me, opening up a comic book is like going to a gallery. That's, that's how I like to absorb and consume artwork, is these... Each comic book is like a, a, its own gallery show of, of artwork that I can look through yeah, and go, wow, look at all the artwork. Look at all the cool artwork, especially when it's good. Like Pit with all its cool fucking shapes and, and dynamic poses and slide, slides, I don't know, colours and fucking shit. It's cool. And then I recall we saw, uh, well, that's a good one. Did we? Did we see? Did I make it up? Fuck, I might have invented it. Oh no, we saw this, yeah. Um, I don't know how clearly it shows on screen, but this looks really, really cool. It looks like it's coloured with like ink washes or pencils or both. <clears throat> I assume that's the original artwork. And then the digital version, it's a cool-ish cover, but it really, it really loses something in, in not being traditionally coloured. That's cool. That's a good pose. I might fill a good few sketchbook pages with me just swiping poses from Pitt, uh, but drawing, you know, obviously Death Fist at the moment. That would work equally well for, like, Gun Viking or something. Uh, you know, steal. Steal everything, everywhere, all the time. 
steal as much as you can but make it your own you know like when you're at school and your friends done the homework and you haven't um because they're your friend but you're not theirs because they don't like you but you know you manage to talk them into uh letting you borrow their uh, uh, uh essay and then you copy it in your own words um and and that's how you get away with it <coughs> god what's wrong uh that's a cool spread that's a cool cool spread clutch that's a good sound effect, man. I did a, an Instagram live the other day, um, and we spent a little bit of time trying to pick out uh, sound effects for a little thing I was doing. Um, God, I'm all sniffly and coughing. I think it might be hay fever or some shit like that. Uh, sniffing's one of those weird things that's like, well, not one of those, it's just a thing that happens. But when doing videos and stuff, as you're filming, you know, you sniff as like a, an automatic sort of bodily reaction to whatever. You don't, you're not even aware you're doing it. And then you watch the video back if you're editing or whatever, and all you can hear is every fucking minute and a half, every 90 seconds or so, just and it's really off-putting. Uh, I try not to do it, but sometimes you just can't fucking help it. But yeah, really like that spread. That's a really cool spread. Spread, 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 spread. Really chunky teeth. I like the fat, chunky teeth. They're really fun. Um, that's a good spread. Another quick one. You can see that's that would have been quick to do. It, um, you know, I can't say for sure, but it certainly looks like that was blown up as well. Like drawn smaller and then blown up. And that's your, your center spread. You've got the staples in there. Probably a nice quick one to do. Love this. Love the shadow here. I like as I was flipping through, I was keeping my fingers here to like make sure I, I remember to look at that because that's really, the size and shape of him as he's walking away. Um, not not an awful lot going on in this. I mean, really, I just want to look at cool drawings of Pit, and this doesn't have a lot of Pit in this issue of this Pit comic. It's cool claw hand though, cool silhouette, like a werewolf howling at the moon. Ow! Um, separation credits, I guess, colours and stuff. Very, very digital colour in that one. Um, random sketches. Don't get to see many of those. And I don't know if I really dig the fact that they've got a little, a little bit of digital colouring just to highlight them against the, the background. So they should have done just like, literally just the sketches on the page rather than put a background in with I guess they got pens and stuff which is kind of cool but I'd rather just see the pages even if these are cut out from pages just a square of this image as as it would be seen on the page rather than with the digital whiteness added but still very cool to see some some rough key own sketches because yeah you don't see many of those and this is cool too I didn't realize this was in here <clears throat> oh. I apologise for all the sniffing, okay? It's just one of those days. Um, I was about to sing a Limp Biscuit song then, but I won't. Uh, when I have an idea for a page, in this case a cover, I do a rough sketch, then transfer it onto Bristol board using a light table. A hard pencil lead cuts down on smudge... Oh, I thought it was going to be more dry dramatic than that cuts down on smudging um pencils switching to a softer lead h or hb i flesh out the cover uh, by darkening the lines and filling in the shadows this stage is the most time consuming for me but i love it which is understandable so he goes from the rough and then the pencils time consuming inks um dan panosian inked this cover and stayed very sincere to my pencils dan uses sable number three brushes and hunt 102 crow quills to do the job Ooh, fancy fancy um, yeah, the inks are good. Um, colour guide. Oh, okay, so this was a colour guide. Um, before I sent the pencil cover to Dan, I made a photocopy of it, 64% reduction, uh, with Pantone markers and pencil crayons. I coloured it. Okay, so 
ink washes is uh, marker pens and also colored pencils like I thought um, this stage doesn't have to be labored over and you don't even have to stay in the lines it's really just to give the separators something to work from color separations this is the fun part I separated the image using my power Mac 8500 and Adobe Photoshop 3.0 with this program, you can zoom right in and take care of all the details. You'll be seeing more seps from me in the future. So he did the colours himself for uh, for this cover, um, but I just think the the marker pen and pencil crayon version looks hundreds of times better than the digital version. But that's just me. That's just fucking bloody ass stupid me number 12 now this is an interesting one because 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 look issue one issue one pit ripping first issue issue 12 pit still ripping see it's like the same is obviously it's obviously a, a redrawing of it it's not photocopied or just swiped or whatever it's, it's a new drawing and it does look new as well it looks a bit more refined a bit tidier less sort of stuff going on but, but yeah um i'm fucking sniffing it's pissing me off sorry I apologize. It's bad form to be fucking sniffing all over the place. Ripping first issue, issue 12, still ripping. I really like that. I think it's a, a neat little throwback to the, the, the first issue. Gray scales. I love the black and white. I love doing that. Throwing in some, some black and white into a... This looks like a flashback because it's black and white. It might be, it might not be. I don't know. A bunch of dead bodies, I assume whoever this is killed a bunch of shit, a bunch of people, a bunch of creatures. And then Pit shows up. Um, it looks like the colours are done very differently because... Now, I know with Photoshop, it looks like uh, he basically selected all of the white space of the ink drawing and deleted it and then colored in the layers underneath the drawing but what it's done which what photoshop will do if you don't edit it it's left in certain places like a faint white outline around some of the black where there's a bit of of you know where the ink isn't necessarily a harsh line like a vectored line so there is a very small amount of, of, of space where there's black ink and white paper sort of mixed together and that becomes like these white outlines <clears throat> so the coloring on this doesn't look anywhere near as tidy as it has done in previous pages um, and then he's sort of recolored the outline into yellow to sort of fade it into the background a bit which can work, but it looks not amateurish, but it looks amateurish in comparison to something like this, for instance. And I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if he skipped a step or uh, something else. But there's there's a weird a weirdness to the inking on that. But that's just still the drawing's fucking great. I love the fucking draw. I love the crotch folds, the chain belt and the crotch and the thighs and the that's a great pose. Love the 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 straight line from the shoulder through to the neck, straight to the head and then down. That's fucking great. Um it's just yeah, in in the coloring digital, man. That's why you should never ever work digitally. Cuz it fucking looks like that. And I assume this is pixelated on purpose, but it's very pixelated and then he's done the recoloring the uh the outline for this guy's shirt but that looks really odd and i'm can't say i'm a fan of it um colors dale keown and brad haffey so dale keown had part of and that's what i was saying before where sometimes 
the colours are completely done by someone else, and sometimes they're not. Um, now I want to play a game called which of these is copy-pasted and which isn't, because some of them are, some of them have to be. Because if you look at the small ones, the amount of detail... I think this is copy-pasted, because there's like a line here, and that might be the line... It will be just off the page, because there's a bleed where it will cut. So I think this is copy pasted here because the the lines are so small and the details so small that it looks like it would have been drawn and then copy and pasted shrunk down on a computer and he spoke about in the previous issue using photoshop more so maybe he's getting on that and doing photoshop color leaving outlines here and there copy pasting certain things I think this one is copy pasted from here so maybe he drew these four and then copy pasted these two and put them here and here just for a couple of extra bits and still I mean drawing four of the same looking robots with quite a lot of detail in them that's no 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 small feat in itself but if you look at the positions of the guns uh, I think I think it's you can see it doesn't matter it doesn't fucking matter at all that's a really fucking cool explosion so, Difficult to get it right. You'd think, like, just draw something blowing up, it's easy. But to make it look like a thing is like this and then coming apart, it's too easy to just draw, like, mess and stuff and look like a random explosion. But to make it look like something's actually coming apart is really difficult. Um, it's not perfect, but it's done really well here. Very effective. The douche pit coming away. It's really cool. It's a fucking savage dragon, but not. That's cool. Very ghost in the shell where she's fucking pulling the tank apart and then her arms come apart and it's like, uh, That's another good pose. That would be one where, again, I need the right arm doing that. So I take a photo, flip it over, and then you've got him, right arm, death fist. Death fist, you know, the guy, the thing I'm doing at the moment. He's pretty funny looking. I like his big head. Really, really nice hatching. Um, on the on the head there, I mean not really 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 nice, but for like comic book inking, there's there's some nice hatching on the head. I like that. I like the apparatus holding his enlarged head up as well. This is where he excels though, just drawing big bulky bodies. That's why his Hulk comics are the best. Uh, not the best necessarily, but I think some of his best work is the Hulk because he just drawing these kinds of hulk type bodies is 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 where he good at great cover great great cover good colors with the blue and the red in the background and then the blue and the red sort of copy throughout the whole thing blue and the red in the little corner box um the red underglow is so nice uh just again with, with him and his double lighting it's done really really well really effectively um, on both characters and, and yeah a really nice sort of like three-thirds cover cool drawing cool coloring and then almost completely different back into uh grayscale looking shit love that it's small but it, i like you can see enough muscles and stuff and shadows and just the shape i like it i just fucking like it Rawr! Now, if we're talking pages to get done quickly, <laughs> gee willikers, I think this is one of those issues that's like, yeah, <laughs> definitely, this, this is definitely, well, I guess there's more detail in th these pages, which means he probably maybe did like some of the detailed pages first and then went back and just quickly like he could have drawn this guy that big and blown it up and that's two entire pages done that could have been drawn separately and added in later the sky frankly is ugly color wise blue and yellow blue and orange go really nicely together blue and yellow not so much in my personal opinion 
so I'm not too keen on that and the grey with that isn't great um, cool enough drawing I like the pose the image but as a double page spread it's a little bit like a little bit lacklustre <laughs> but you know time saving thing got to get your pages done and then yeah I think similarly here and here just quick quick pages big bold shapes minimal inking really there is you know there's decent inking some good hatching and detail here and there but it's you know chunky shapes chunky shapes chunky shapes fill up the space as quick as you can uh, same here zero background <laughs> just a very very basic color fade couple of chunky characters I like it. I, you know, I'm not, I, I like looking at the drawings and the shapes and the digs into his arm and then he fucking brrr, or his back or whatever and then fucking hit in the jaw and that's a difficult uh, angle to draw a head from so that's quite cool. Bites into him. They're having their fight. Oh, tumble, tumble, boil and bumble. I've lost all sense of plot at this point. I have no idea who's who or what's going on. Another digitally added. <laughs> There's no way that's drawn in. That's That has to be drawn separately and added in digitally. Or at least maybe this one was drawn and that was digitally added. Somewhere. There's digital trickery, which there's nothing wrong with it. Even in Death Fist, in, in one of the first eight pages, I've, I've used some digitally added duotone dots for one panel in particular. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just fun to be able to point out and be like, oh, this was all drawn and this wasn't. I don't know. There's a lot of blue and yellow in this issue, which, like I say, I'm not really a fan of that colour combination. Personally, it's not to my, my personal taste. Ah, that looks really fucking cool. But it isn't a father. But uh, yeah, another another quick couple of pages. Any particularly cool fan art? That's really really good. That's pretty good too. And he's trying to take what I was uh, pointing out with the the line with the shoulder and then whatevs. Was that 13, 14? It's quite a cool cover. It somewhat reminds me of uh, Jurassic League by Juan Gedeon. Um, really like the the almost subtle blue glow on on the the rims of their heads there. I really like the green and the gums and teeth look really really cool. <clears throat> and then that line of shadow is really nice. And then the subtle blue is really nice also. And I like the, the, the pink contrasts really well with the, uh, the green. There's a lot of good colour work in this. Like in the previous issue, sometimes not so much with all the blue and yellow. Whoa! Really, really like that. The colouring on that is really nice. The, G the double lighting is really, really good. Really well done. Like the, the glowy green face looks really cool, but then the like a dark shadow blue glow there's so many it's like a contrasting oxymoronic kind of thing so effective and it, it makes the the heads look so lumpy and like physical like all these tendons and like wrinkles around the the mouth and neck and stuff really really effective with the armor and stuff as well but those heads look really nice they're really really well done even on the teeth as well subtle but it's there the the little double lighting with the blue glow on the teeth really cool i like that i like that a lot and now i think about it if if you look at this the amount of detail in here he probably knew this issue was going to be full of all of this or maybe he drew it first and so then the previous issue had to have like no detail whatsoever because <laughs> Or like double page spread three sort of three panel levels or whatever double page spread three panel levels you look at the difference in 
in amount of drawing, in detail, in colour. Everything in here is just full of drawing, full of detail, full of action, full of colour. There's so much going on. You, it's in the same way a TV show has, you know, bottle episodes um, where they have just people in a room talking for an entire episode. So it doesn't cost them as much money, which means they have the budget to spend on uh, bigger, more bombastic, dynamic episodes like this. The big fucking action fight scenes. Detail, detail, detail. Like, it's not just there's a bunch of people fighting. The detail in the suits, the scales on their, like, mail on their arms and legs and the robotic-looking parts of their armour. All these fucking weird mutant dinosaur guys fighting. All of these bodies. There's no copy-pasting going on there. That's all drawn. And whoever this big fucker is, he's got some detailed-as-fuck armour. Even this one single panel is really, like... There's a lot of drawing, a lot of detail in the robotics or the machinery around him and these cables and stuff, all the chains and tears and wrinkles and creases. The lighting, uh, the colouring is, is a lot more, or looks a lot more uh, done. <laughs> uh, it looks like a lot more effort's gone into the, the colouring. Again, the glow on all of his muscles and stuff is really, really, uh, you know, it just looks... Like, a lot more work has gone into this compared to something like this. I think it's fair to say it is almost certainly a, a time thing. It's just having an amount of time to do stuff. Um, colours by Dale Keown and Brad. So, yeah, they teamed up on the colours. Ooh! Ooh! A mini poster. Oh, my God. Eh, it's all right. Meh. I'd rather have uh, a mini poster of that opening scene. Give me a poster of that. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah, that's kind of neat that it's still in there. Keeping the original shit around. Vzrap! Nobody loves me. He's gone. End. Is that the end of the story? How fucking long are we spending on this? We've got time for one more. I think we've got time for one more. Let's look at one more. 15. And then that, that leaves us with 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 for next week. Right. Let's pit 15. Now... This works a bit better with blue and yellow because the blue is darker, the yellow is a bit less abundant and um, less yellowy, and there's enough black sort of weighing it down and separating the two. It's not bright blue, grey, bright, bright yellow, which there's too much like, ugh. Whereas this, it's like a rich blue, there's a lot of black, and then the yellow is like more of a glow than you know, an overpowering thing. So here, I think the blue and yellow is very effectively used. This weird digital effect that's put in there is kind of neat. That's nice. So yeah, I, I like this. This is a blue and yellow I'm happy with. Is it 13? Because, I mean, it... again, comparison, like... That shit's ugly as fuck, frankly. But this is not. That's really pretty. Still, I'd prefer it to be, like, you know, an orange or a pink with the blue, or maybe a purpley, more of a purpley blue. But still, uh, that works really, really well. And the amount of black in there is really important as well, because it does need that uh, distinct separation between the two colours. So says me. With my 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 deep, intimate, and infinite knowledge on comics and colours and shit. The goop. We love some goop. Dead alien bastards. Pink blood, yellow, green blood. Gloopy goop gloop. That's fucking cool. 
See that this would be that something I'd I'd draw this and send it in as fan art if I were in the 90s again and this was a new thing I would absolutely draw that I might draw that just for fun I might paint it for fun because it'll be cool like those Bisley copies I've been doing I'll do some fucking key own copies as well and yeah I think that would look cool like hand painted with you know a bit more sort of texture to it oh that's nice not amazing but it's nice the the uh sort of brush hatching whatever etching look is kind of nice and a very very cool effect with this sort of glow across the the dark arm it definitely does look like an a different kind of of flesh rather than the usual like pit flesh or whatever like yeah it looks like a shinier black alien flesh which is neat ooh love me a collage now i wonder if this was drawn if this artwork exists as one piece of artwork that's drawn like this or if it is made out of separate drawings see because this no it is it's separate artwork because i think that's straight up from one of the earlier issues I think this was one of the covers of an earlier issue. God knows which one, but it was one of them, because I think it's one of those ones I pointed out that I really, really like the colour of. Um, I can only find this one. Oh, no, it's, it's the interior, isn't it? Which is this eight, so I think the issue seven will have at the end... God damn fan art get out of it. Nope, maybe I made it up. Maybe it is in this one. God shit and damn it. Yeah, there. So that's Yeah, that's taking this artwork and put it here. So that is a collage. It's not a drawing. It's a collage. It would be cool if that was one drawing. I'd love to see the original artwork like that but it's not it's made up of other pieces which is also cool that's cool one of those instances where you just leave the background to the colorist you do something you come up with some kind of portal or some shit throw in whatever effects you like maybe keon added in these shapes i don't know they're digitally blurred as fuck but a cool pose really good use of shadow covering large portions of the body a really effective use of shadow like sometimes shadow looks like it's just sort of thrown in because yeah shadow whatever but that looks like it's used knowingly like this is a smart use of shadow everything's on fire and there's a guy oh Ooh, ooh. We're on the, the last leg, the final stretch, the final countdown. Do -do 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 It's pit. Uh, the last, the last four, four issues. Where, we, where did we at? Where did we at? you son of a bitch last five issues that's right we did 15 do you know what i realized i don't think i bought this up whilst looking at them but i meant to um i'm undecided on whether or not i like this thing which is this i pointed this out as a really cool page in the comic i really like it. i like the shape and the goop the you know dale keown's drawings are fucking mwah. chef's kiss a plenty mwah, 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 mwah. But what I realised is this. It's the same. Now, it's a very cool cover because it's a very cool drawing. And it makes it even, it looks like it's coloured slightly. Not coloured differently, but it looks a bit different. It's probably because it's a different coat on the paper or something. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so there's, it, that happens a few times throughout the series. I don't think I could pull any out right away that, I don't think that's one 
there are a few uh, I think that might be one um, <laughs> I should do research sometimes but yeah it's it's I can't I, it's, sometimes it feels like a bit of a cop-out like just you know you, you draw a whole issue and you've got to draw it quick and you've got to get it out so it may be the case that it's just easier to pick a cool bit from inside the comic put it on the front of the comic and in that way it's almost like a trailer like you see this and you're like wow I've got to go through and see this and then you get to that scene and you go oh wow that's what was happening in that scene so it can be quite good but at the same time it's like one more drawing just one one more drawing <laughs> I say that knowing if I was making the thing I'd be like fuck you I've done enough I even did that on um, my gun viking 24 hour comic the front cover is uh, an early page from the inside of the of the book, maybe even the first page. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, and it feels a little bit like um, when they say the name of the film in the film. Uh, I can think of zero um, <laughs> examples of that, but it happens. It happens a lot. Uh, me and my friend Harvey, when we used to watch films together a lot. And we, whenever that would happen, we'd look at each other and put our arms in the air and go, it's the name of the film. It was like a thing. Um, and it was, it was a bit of fun. But, you know, it feels a bit silly sometimes when they do. Like, for some reason, the film Old Boy is in my head. Um, I think the term Old Boy is used, but it doesn't feel like it's sort of, you know, the the, the cliche trope of, now it's you who are the old boy. And then they fucking wink at the camera. They don't actually, but you know, you get it. You get the, the fucking thing of it. Um, I, it doesn't matter. Let's look at some fucking issue 16. Very USA on this one, twice, three times, three times in these five issues. It's USA. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I'm totally cool with that, but whatever covers pretty cool that's a good good cover um contains scenes of horror and violence i should hope so i want to get my money's worth oh look it's bill fucks kids clinton it's friend of epstein bill clinton amazing i wonder if they knew back there that's fucking cool the bill clinton you can tell it's supposed to be bill clinton i assume it's supposed to be bill clinton um it looks more or less like him and so the drawing of him is just like a person but then you see this and i like that it's got like skin but hardly anywhere on it i assume it's skin and so it's mostly like almost muscle sinews and stuff showing through <coughs> the big fucking claws and shit love it it's like the hulk if he was uh, a fucking g blood love me some of that i like it when they beg is this a pit a pit fiend or it's a different guy? It's not the same guy, but that's a cool, you know, nice, quick and easy splash panel. As is that. <laughs> What's happening on this page? One single panel and then a little, you know, copy paste job. Some nudity, bloody nudity. Man, I'd love to see who wore... Oh, he walked in, he saw the clothes, and he was like, ooh, there's some skimpy outfit. I'd love to see who wore this. Then turn around. <laughs> some hot chick covered in blood, impressed. Oh, yeah. Good, I'd hate to disappoint you. As she puts a collar on him. What is it, like a bomb collar or something? I don't know. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm so meh about, like, nudity in comics and stuff these days. I'm just like... Sure, I mean it's not not unnecessary. I'm not against it, but it's just like I don't turn to that page and go, "Whoa, look at that!" The smoke, the convenient smoke and elbow placements. That's quite smart for covering up the the tits and vag. But yeah, I'm I'm really sort of not unimpressed, but un unastounded by it. That's a decent. That's actually a really cool double page spread. Single panel as well. One single drawing. I say one single drawing. These probably took quite a lot of work. Do we reckon that's copy paste? Uh, no, I don't reckon it is. I believe those are each individual drawings. 
good on him for that, I suppose. There's a lot of detail and a lot going on with the angle and the, the bits and... That's a lot. Pit looks fucking gangster. Fire and smoke is really cool, like, background shape device. Body in the foreground and shit. That's really, really cool. Really, well, uh, oh, well, uh, oh, well, cool. Oh my god, everyone's dead. A joke about getting ahead. Oh man, this is f Timmy Bracken. What's your language? How will you ever get ahead and see this guy's had his head cut off? Is that Timmy, Timmy, Timmy from the the young boy Timmy from the boy in the comic, Timmy? It means you're already dead. That's really fucking cool. The colouring, like that would look like a cool black and white drawing, but I think the colouring does a lot for that. That adds adds a lot. It's not like it's only good because of the colouring, but the colouring adds a lot to this drawing. That that double lighting and everything. The chunkiness of the... the see, because if it was just the drawing, you'd have the hatching around the gums doing the, its job, but the teeth would look a bit bare and hollow. Um, but there's a lot of chunkiness added by the colouring in that. A lot of really nice texture in the skin as well. Very cool. Explosions are always fun, quite difficult to draw. Akira draws a lot of uh, good explosions. Akira, the one who drew the Akira comics. Akira the Akira. Yeah, there's a lot of good explosions in Akira is my, my point. Fan art, fan art, fan art. That's kind of cool in, a, in an odd sort of way. Some of it's whatever. Oh shit, man. That's fan art. That's really fucking cool. They did the uh, computer colouring and everything. Good on them for that. Anyway, getting towards the end of the, the full pit 20 issue saga. That's fucking killer. I love that. The lighting on that is so good. The cover's cool. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. He looks fairly generic 90s comic anti-hero. You know, like Patriot with guns and ooh, the, the crew cut, fucking whatever. Really, again, the the the, the lighting, the colour and lighting in the pit comics is really, really fucking good. On the hair is really good. The double lighting on the face is really good. It looks so three-dimensional. It looks really fucking solid. I like that a lot. And that's... That's fucking really cool. I keep standing up to like look in, in on my, my phone on the, on the screen to see how it looks. And yeah, it looks really fucking good. That's really cool. That would be a nice poster. Make that a fucking poster. Oh, cool. People talking. I love pictures of people talking in comic books. It's the best thing ever. If you're going to draw pages and pages of comics, make sure you draw pages of people's heads talking again and again and again. Oh, well, you've got to put the story across somehow. I know, I get it. I know how stories work to some degree. Oh, this has got a lot of it, though. I mean, there's stuff happening, but it's not like... I guess every page can't be pit action page, pit action page, pit action. Why can't it? Fucking, they made... Um, Eastman and Bisley did body count, and that was fucking pretty much full bore action, page after page after page. So it's possible you can do it. Not too keen on this guy's trousers. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, they look how they. I think it's just this line here. That's just one smooth line of trouser. This bit feels a bit better, but that I don't know. Whatevs. Give a shit. Oh no, Timmy's had his fucking head cut off. Oh, in a gnarly way as well. Some like wire through the hole in this cell door. Is it a cell door or whatever? Around his neck and then she's just fucking gone shit. Taking his head off. <gasps> oh shit, my fucking bunts is off. Oh, what have you done? You've cut my head off, you cunt. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? Tony Harrison from the Mighty Boosh. I come with a papoose. Pit got a gun. Shit. We're all fucked now. I like this set of panels. That's a really nice... Like, cinematic 
widescreen panels. It's good as well because it's like there's a lot of people talking, people talking, people talking, and then splash panel, and then action, action, action. You've killed your last American monster. To be continued. Ugly Americans. That's actually a really funny uh, cartoon series called Ugly Americans. It's like an animated... Uh, I did say the cartoon series, so animated is kind of a given. I believe this is a drawing blown up to large size. It's not necessarily drawn at full size. Judging by some of the marks... It looks like it might even be the pencils with upped contrast rather than even being inked. But I might be talking absolute shite. I might not know what the fuck I'm going on about. That's cool. A cool uh, standoff combat page. Two bros chilling in a hot tub. Right next to each other because they're a bit gay. Which is perfectly acceptable. Even in America would you... Well, in some places in America. Really good. Really, really, really good. The size and fucking density. Oh, oh. I love the tendons in his neck, the, the direction and the stretching of all of that. And then this claw coming out into the foreground. It's really fucking good. All like the skin folds and shit. Really, really fucking cool. I know he's still dead, but his eyes looked up. What's going on? If it is Timmy the Kid, then he's got some kind of superpowers. So maybe being beheaded isn't going to keep him out of action. Wait a minute, get you. It's all over, General. Stand down. I can't do that, sir. You know I can't. Blam! Oh, shit, you shot me, you son of a bitch. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, is it the werewolf woman from before? She was in, like... Issues and issues and issues ago. He is. He's got his magic powers. His head's floating up and exploding. Weird. Jung. Some like nuclear blast or something. Or was that literally... I don't know what it was. I really have to poop right now. I'm going to try and make it through the rest of this. There's only, what, this is what, 18? Two more issues to go. I'll try to hold on. But, uh... We'll see how it goes. Oh, no! Oh, okay, well, that... <laughs> see, they... Got, uh... These, the top panels it's the same and then this panel just made it a bit smaller and I think he put put them slightly together a bit more to make it fit into a smaller square and then he just took that one back threw a new speech bubble in there to make it fit a bit better which I might I was and you might have seen it by my reaction. When I first saw that just now, I was like, oh, really? They're just going to copy-paste like an entire page of artwork. But then I realised this is, it's a flash, like if it was a movie, this is what you see at the beginning. goes, yep, yeah, that's me. You're president of the United States. You're probably wondering how I got here. I almost went into an Australian accent. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. That was terrible. I apologise. No, I don't. Shit off, you hairy dog's cock. But then it's like, story, 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 and then flash back to the beginning. Um, can we talk about this? Perhaps find a peaceful solution? No. <gasps> Dead. He killed the president. Oh, my God. That's a cool eye. It's not amazing, but it's cool. It's a good insert panel. His face, his eye. That's that's a terrified eye. The red glow is really good. And then the... Him dead on the floor, covered in blood, as all presidents should be. <laughs> but wait, what? Was that a fake president? Is he not really dead? I think you're right, Mr. President. Unfortunate. But then they killed him anyway. What's going on? What the heck is going on? Find out next issue.
right now. Weird cover. The lighting. I love the lighting. I'm a sucker for a good bit of lighting. And cool monsters. There are a few artists that do really fucking cool monsters. Dale Keown is one of them. Ryan Otley is a very, very recent one that does cool monsters. And I've looked at plenty of his artwork before, so, you know, fucking whatever. I like that drawing. I think that's a really cool drawing. Like minimal, almost kind of minimal hatching to just um, imply texture in the head. But like with the lighting and stuff and the colouring, again, adding to it, I really like that drawing. There's something oddly satisfying about that drawing. And I guess this is all about the big head man. Even as a baby, he had a big fucking head. Um, scientific term, what happened to us is in utero cannibalism. Oh, he ate his twin in utero. That's what that is. Oh, lighting, man. The fucking lighting in these comics is insanely good. I love it so much. And I like that it's used a lot, but it's used really well. It's not used as a gimmick so much. And it's not just like, I oh, will throw it here, throw it there. It's like, it really, really, the colour adds. To, I've, I, in a lot of comics, you just sort of like look at them and go, oh, the colour's quite cool, I guess. But this is a comic series where the colour really, really does add to it. These are cool. I like these little snapshots of the big head guy growing up. It's really cool, like, cartoon little drawings, but they fit into the world of, of it all. The nurse, like, the fuck is this thing? I guess that's his mum being like, oh, my God, I've got this giant-headed baby, and he's all sad, but then he talks to someone, and he's out, and then Doctor saves head boy. <laughs> head boy. Faster than leg boy. Even though you think leg boy will be faster than head boy, because leg boy is based around legs which are made for movement. The bugs are cool, the double lighting's cool, the things are cool, this is a cool comic, things and things. Is that just copy pasted? I think it is. Ooh, it might be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is. With the bugs and all. This bug certainly. Even the bugs are copy paste. There's a lot of... I, I thought that. As as I first looked at this cover, I was like, oh, it looks like there might be quite a lot of copy pasting going on. But then I was like, oh, no, they probably... He probably drew it. No, I think the woman is like a robot... A series of robot women's, as evidenced by here. Now, uh... There's no, there is no benefit to knowing if it's copy pasted or not. Good evening, doctors, Gilly. Doctors, is that supposed to be doctor? So they're all saying the same thing. I think that is a copy pasted drawing here, because it's a, a robot woman, and they're all like clones or whatever. So it makes sense. And so it makes sense to copy paste them. But ugh. I had something weird in my mouth. It was a cock. <laughs> But yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of copy pasting on here, which you make a cover as you need to make a cover. It's whatever. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just pointing out that oh, I think that's what was done. Again, there's no benefit to that. It doesn't help or hinder things in any way. Really cool monsters. I like the monsters. Monsters, monsters. Bow monsters. Monster fight. Fuck yeah. Get at it. Oh, that's fucking cool. Punches into his fucking rib cage, like his hands fucking in his body, in his gut, and then his body grows teeth and bites down on his arm, or his mouth moves into a different part of his body, or whatever. That's fucking cool. Double lighting's really nice. The turquoise works with like the the brown and the purple. It's good shit. It's good shit, man. Oh, he's going fucked. He swallowed him whole. Tongue around his neck. It's a really, really cool, like, fight scene. Multiple arms, he's lifting him up. Mouth open, tongue around the neck. Pulls him in, swallows him whole. Glug. The chains around his ankle bites them off. <laughs> and then this is really good. 
his face is like, ha ha ha, I hate you, you bastard. Hmm? Even like in this odd, odd shaped head and face, he's got a confused look on his face where he's like, shit, what's going on? Blah, that's fucking cool. Blanche. Again, I have to stand up to see how it looks in the in the camera. That's fucking so good. And it's got like intestines and shit. All the goop. We love the goop. The the distorted monster face and stretching skin. Really good. Just peace in general. Really good directional stuff. That's really, really fucking good. He's got like his guts in his mouth and stuff. That's fucking cool. Zlotch. Splat. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that a lot. That's a really good sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. Eight pages. That's like the teaser of Death Fist. Uh, fuck it. Go to my Patreon and see it. I'll have to try to come up with a fight scene even a fraction as good as that for uh, Death Fist. There will be at least one good fight scene in Death Fist. Or one fight scene. I don't know if it will be a good one, but... <laughs> Death Fist is my comic I'm working on currently, if you're unaware, just in case. Last issue, final issue. Frankly, the cover is a bit of a letdown. I don't know if he knew it was going to be the final issue, and if he did, maybe he would have put in more uh, effort into the cover. But as far as the pit covers go, it's not the best. It's not, you know. It's bright and eye-catching, but, you know, because of the colours, but the cover itself is, is a little bit... A little bit meh. I'm going to say that. It's a little bit meh. This one's got fucking galactic gods in it. Is that Doctor Strange? Is he allowed to use Doctor Strange? Oh, I like this. Barren wasteland with like an orc kind of thing. Across a trail of bones with a book. Scripture. Oh, there's god demons and shit. I have no idea what's going on. But it looks cool. I like the throne of bones. The bone throne. That's what I say when I, I invite people back to my home for sex i say do you want to come back to the bone throne and they're like oh let me see that throne mr bone and then they walk in and see my mattress on the floor my undecorated walls water damage and just fucking drawings of tits everywhere and they turn around and leave and rightly so oh look big green man's got a big puffy coat on and a little rat on his side that's cute oh yeah, the rat. Or is it a fashion statement? That's my lunch. <laughs> Ugh, then why are you wearing it? I don't like the taste of fear in an animal, uh, in, a, in an animal's blood yet. Uriel said that I'll get used to it, but it still makes me edgy. So I keep them close to me, and when they're not afraid anymore, I swallow them quick. <laughs> and there he swallowed it quick. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. I still have no idea who the green guy is. I haven't read any of this shit. And I won't. I refuse. Hey, that's a pose I draw all the time. Hand down doing this, fist in the other hand. I like the, the throne. The crotch creases, man. A good bulge in there as well. And I like that he, that he put at least some semblance of a bulge in there because so many people... Let me see if I can draw it. Especially, uh, Liefeld did it a lot, you know, well, we all know how great Liefeld is. Um, in, like, 90s comics, they have these massive guys with, like, big, strong tits. These are tits. Big, strong tits, and they're jacked. They've got six packs and fucking all the rest of it. They're, like, massive, big fucking arms and fists. These are fists. Knuckle tendons and shit. And then... You get like a belt full of pouches and then the the, the waist and the, the, the crotch area here and it's a big fucking legs and massive chunky boots. 
you know, 90s comics, fucking uh, cool, gnarly, yeah, whatever, let's go. And then you get to the crotch and they do stuff like this. And, you know, they have like that kind of shading on these bits of the legs and stuff. And it's just so like, I get you're just drawing a comic and you want it to be, uh, to appeal to as wide an audience as possible. But they literally like, like almost flat out remove any trace of genitalia. And it's like, you don't have to draw genitals and have them be like, oh, tea, there's a penis under there. <laughs> but it's there. So fucking just, you know, you don't even have to like draw the outline of the head. You just show that there is a bulge here because that's what goes there. You draw the fucking women with their tits out and their fucking spines cracked in half as they bend over backwards to look sexy. But you won't draw a bulge. I might be seen as gay. Great crotch creases, good bulge, good trou trousers creases in general. And another, okay, yeah, that might be partly why I, I instinctively didn't like the cover because it's just a page from the comic. It's the last issue, make it fucking something. It's easy for me to say with hindsight and just sitting here on my own looking at this shit. But it's just a little bit annoying. Is all. After such a, a great series full of amazing artwork that I've just fucking creamed over for weeks. <laughs> weeks I've been doing it. And then to get to the last issue and go, eh. Oh, and that, and that was the last issue. And that was quite a meh last issue. Is it dead? No, it only retreated. Do you have any comprehension of what you've done? No, and neither do you. Uh, and neither do you know what will come of this. It is a beginning or an ending for all of us. Uh, if we are destroyed, the blame will lay at your door. We will tell you. We will tell what you've wrought. Everyone, you, uh, every, everyone, I can't read. Everyone will know that you are the one responsible for this. Well, someone has to be. The end. The end of Pip Comics. I mean, that might be copied from the comic, and that might have been exactly what. I just described was done in a pit comic so you know even Dale Keown is is guilty of that but in the last issue we've got a nice that's probably the best drawing in the issue actually <laughs> like even the action scenes it's like yeah it's kind of cool that's a decent like angle and stuff the coloring doesn't look as as great as previous issues that's kind of like kind of cool but a bit mm, That's pretty neat. But yeah, I think that crotch might be the best part of the of the final issue. Still though, overall, you know, I'm not gonna judge the entire series based on the fact that the final issue was a in my own opinion a little bit lackluster. Some cool artwork. Overall, fucking wow. Twenty issues of just phenomenal drawings that I can and will look at again and again and again. And I hope you liked it. And uh, you fucking... Uh, I still need to go and do a shit, so I, I'm going to do that now.